Hello everyone, our topic for today is the pendulum. The first task would be to find the solution of the pendulum. As an exercise, we will use three different methods for this purpose. The second task is to solve the pendulum in the elevator when it moves linearly up and down with the linear acceleration. So what does it mean for the pendulum behavior and for its oscillation frequency? And the third task is the free fall of the pendulum. What happens with the pendulum when it falls down with the gravity acceleration? Okay, the first method to solve the pendulum is the force derivation. We know the length of the thread of the pendulum and we derive the forces acting on it. This is a gravity force and reaction force. It will move with two acceleration, one is tangential as on the picture and second is the normal acceleration, which will be directed to the point of connection of the pendulum on the top. We won't need it in this method, therefore it is not shown in the picture. Then we connect the coordinate system with the moving mass. And then we write the Newton's first law with consideration of the non-inertial force acting on the mass. This is the force's projection in x direction. And as a next step, we need to consider definition of the tangential acceleration. We need to note that the angular acceleration beta has a negative sign in compared to the second derivative of the angular position of the pendulum. This is because the angular acceleration has a different direction than the angular position of the pendulum. Therefore, the pendulum will always try to move to the position of its mechanical equilibrium. Now we substitute the angular acceleration and we got the following equation. In case if the angular acceleration has the same sign as the second derivative of the angular position, theta, this will describe the following system, mechanical system. This is a ball rolling down over the sphere. In this case, the increase of the angular position of the ball will lead to increase of the angular acceleration of the ball, and therefore the angular position of the ball will have an exponential dependency over the time. And we go back to our task, and we got the following equation, which describes the dynamic motion of our pendulum. This differential equation includes the harmonic function sign. Therefore, there is no solution for this equation in the elementary mathematical functions. But we can use the following approximation for our problem. We assume that oscillation amplitude is very small, close to zero. In this case, the following function describes the dynamic motion of the pendulum. The solution of this equation gives us the angular position of the pendulum. This is the harmonic function cosine with the following oscillation frequency and the following oscillation period. We can see here that oscillation frequency and the period do not depend on the mass of the pendulum. And we go to the second method. This is a torque derivation. We move our system coordinate to the top of the pendulum. Then we write the forces acting on the pendulum, gravity and reaction force. We also define the linear position and angular acceleration of the pendulum. And we write torques acting on the pendulum. This is a gravity torque is equal to the moment of inertia of the pendulum times its angular acceleration. The mass moment of inertia is defined as ml square, and the angular acceleration beta is the second derivative of the angular position with the negative sign, because the angular position increase would lead to increase the angular acceleration in the opposite direction. If you substitute both to the upper formula, we get the following equations. Then we do the following approximation for the small oscillation of the pendulum. And then we have the final equation defining the dynamic motion of the pendulum. And the same solution for the angular position for the oscillation frequency and period as at the first method. Okay, now we go to the third method, which is conservation of the mechanical energy. For this purpose, we consider additional input. This is a velocity of the pendulum in the lower position and its vertical displacement between top and lower position. Then the full mechanical energy of the system is the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Then the velocity and the vertical position needs to be derived from the angular position of the pendulum. This is a theta angle. And then we substitute these two to the first equation for the system energy. 
according to the energy conservation law, this energy is the constant. And as a next step, we will take the first derivative of this equation. The result is the following formula, where we have first derivative of the angular position and second derivative. So in this case, we have uh, two solutions of this equation. So first solution is when the first derivative of the angle is zero. This means that angular velocity is zero, and this is a static condition and no oscillation. And second equation already describes the harmonic motion of our pendulum. The solution is the same as by the first and the second methods. Okay, now we have a challenge. Our pendulum is moving inside the elevator. The elevator moves up and down with the certain line acceleration A. This means that the gravity inside the elevator G1 is different than outside. It is equal to G plus A, where A is the line acceleration of the elevator. For the oscillation frequency and oscillation pre period, this means that we need to use G1 acceleration, gravity acceleration, inside the elevator. And in case if the elevator moves, moves upwards, the gravity acceleration will increase, and this means that the oscillation frequency will increase, but acceleration period will be lower. If the elevator moves downwards, then the gravity acceleration inside the elevator G1 is lower, equal G minus A, and this means that oscillation frequency will be lower in this case, but oscillation period is the higher. Okay, we go now to the next task. Let us imagine that the elevator with the pendulum is in free fall. What does it mean for the pendulum? The gravity acceleration inside the elevator is zero. This means that oscillation frequency of the pendulum is also zero, and the period is infinite. This means nothing else that there will be no oscillation inside the elevator. And this is all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.